Do you want to learn how you can take a software project from requirements through to solution design? Well, in this video, that is exactly what I'm going to be showing you how to do. Hi guys, my name is Sam with Complete Coding. And this video is going to be a little bit different to some of our existing videos. What we're going to be looking at is we're going to be looking at a project description and going through it, analyzing the different components of it, and then using that to design and build a solution architecture diagram. And we're going to be designing it as if we're going to be building it in serverless. So the first thing we're going to do is review the requirements. So let's jump over to my screen and go through them. So here we've got the project brief, and this is what we got sent over from the client, documenting what their idea is and some more specifics. So the idea of this project is to have a marketing agency with 300 odd people, and they want to be able to send them Google form surveys and track them more effectively. They want users to be able to sign up and then with those demographic details, they want to be able to filter the users down and then send a specific survey to the users that match that, serve, that group search. So as we scroll down, we see that we have some platform specific requirements. They want to have an admin panel for managing the surveys and for filtering participants. It should work with Google Forms and it should be designed using a UI library that they have provided. They've also provided PDFs, which if I go into here, which show the journey of both users and admins as well as containing the UI that they would like. This is always really nice as designing the UI for a customer is a whole nother ball game. So as you can see, there are two users, an admin and a registered user. And here are some requirements for what the admin should be able to do. They should be able to create a pool of users and send them a survey based on those demographics. They should be able to create, edit and delete these user pool groups. They should be able to manually update the list of templates that are available for sending out and then have an overview of all of the conducted surveys, active and archived. Last thing they should be able to do is manually approve payments. So when a user requests to get some money out, they can approve that transaction. For their users, they should be able to sign up and fill out their demographics, then update them if they change. They should then be able to receive and complete a survey. Once they've completed enough surveys, they should be able to request a payment. And all of this should be responsive so that a user could do this on mobile or on desktop. So now that we've got that, I've gone through this and designed this out myself. So if we jump into Draw.io, then we can look at what I've designed. So Draw.io is really useful for drawing out architecture diagrams and planning things out. And although I do prefer to do this on paper the first time, when you've got a good idea down, you can put it into draw.io and it's really nice and easy to share with your end users. So what I'm gonna do is step through the journey of the platform and add some architecture as we go. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to have our admins log in. So I'm gonna use Amazon Cognito and I'm gonna have an app here for the admins to use, which is just gonna use S3 and CloudFront. 
and we're going to be using Amplify to connect to Cognito. Once the user has logged in, we're going to use an API and we're going to be using an API gateway to a Lambda, which is going to be called Send Invite. So this is for when our admins want to invite some new users to the platform. This is just going to call SES, which is the simple email service and send an email to the user. Now that the user has received the email, they can go to their user app, which is a separate application. And I've done this just because there's never going to be any crossover where a user is doing admin tasks or an admin is doing user tasks. Again, they can log in with Cognito. And then this time we're going to be using a GraphQL API through to Amazon Aurora. And that's going to add the user information and the demographics to this Aurora database. Now I've used Aurora here for a very specific reason. And that is that with something like DynamoDB, you can only really query over one field. Whereas when we're later querying this to create a user pool, we're going to need to query on multiple fields. So now the user has signed up, entered their demographic information into Amazon Aurora. Aurora. What we need to do next is allow the, the admin to send a survey to the user. So again, we're going to use GraphQL and we're going to create two Dynamo tables. One is going to be surveys and one is going to be user pools. So the first thing the admin needs to do is actually create a pool of users. That user pool is going to be a saved query such as gender equals female, age is between 18 and 34, and continent equals North America. And these groups or user pools can be designed by the admin. Once they've created some user pools, they can then create a survey. And a survey will have some information, including what the link is to the Google form, what, how, num how many points the user gets for completing this, and some other information around the survey usage, such as an expiry date. So now that we have a surveys and a user pool table, and we've added uh, some users to this user pool, and then created a survey which connects that user pool, we need to send that invite. So what we need to do is create a new endpoint on our API. And the reason we're doing this as an endpoint is there's quite a lot of complex logic that we want to keep out of the apps. Now that we've hit this Lambda, we need to do a lookup on the survey to get the metadata about the survey that we are sending. That's going to include the user pool that we want to send that survey to. So now that we have those two bits of information, what we need to do next is we need to do a lookup to our Amazon Azura users using the query from the user pool. And then we are going to have a list of users that we want to send this to. With this list of users, what we want to do is we want to use SES to send them that email, but also update the users and add the survey to the list of incompleted surveys. So now the user has just received an email saying that they've been invited to a new survey. They're going to log in and this time they're going to look at the surveys table for the surveys that they have access to. This is going to show up as a list of surveys that they can complete. They can then go in and fill out that survey. And once that is completed, it will be submitted to the Google Forms API. It will then update the Amazon Azura users table with their user adding some credits to their account based on which survey they have completed and then moving that survey into a completed state 
for that user. After that, what they want to do is actually get some money out of this system. They may have completed a couple of different surveys and have built up a bit of a balance. So now what they need to do is make a payment request. And for this, I'm gonna use a Lambda. That Lambda needs to do a couple of things. First, it needs to get the user from the table. And with this user, it needs to check that both the user exists and the user has enough credit on their account, which they've earned through surveys, to redeem this voucher. It then needs to update the payment request table, saying that there is a payment to this user for this amount. The last thing it needs to do is remove the number of credits from that user's account. Now that there is this table with pending payments, what we need to do is add a new GraphQL connector to it so that the admin app can look at all of the outstanding payments. With all those outstanding payments, an admin can choose to approve one and put them into the approved payments table. So now that all of these payments are approved and in the approved payments table, an admin can log in, see all of the approved payments and process them in their payment system. So that is the full architecture for this relatively simple uh, survey application. And I'd deploy all of this using AWS and serverless. So in this video, we've done something a little bit different. We've taken a project, which was some requirements and some diagrams and then we've translated that into our solution design. We've been able to break it down and follow the process of both users and administrators so that we can make sure that our architecture is robust. Now that we've got the architecture, we can go away and build that using serverless and deliver that to a very happy customer. If you've liked what you've seen in this video, make sure to comment down below saying what about it you have liked. This is a new kind of format for me and for complete coding. So all the feedback you can give me is going to be useful. So thank you again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.